Thank you, uh, Marie. See if everybody knows you now. This way. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> vas -y, vas -y. Uh, so uh, I come from uh, Aperam Research Center in uh, Isberg. And I will present to you some uh, part of the results of Arthur Desprez, PhD, who was in, uh, in Vancouver with uh, Chad Sinclair. And uh, Arthur is now in, uh, in Grenoble CMAP. And uh, this work was uh, supervised by uh, so Chad and uh, my colleague Francis Chassagne. And I will speak about uh, texture formation during the hot rolling of ferritic stainless steels. So a few words about ferritic stainless steel. We've heard uh, uh, different things about uh, austenitic stainless steel uh, this morning, three or four, or super austenitic this morning. I will speak about uh, uh, much uh, cheaper uh, stainless steel because based only on iron chromium uh, system. Uh, you see on this chart the relative price of uh, materials uh, and uh, austenitic stainless steel uh, contain uh, significant or large amount of, uh, of nickel, which is uh, very expensive. So you can guess the, the consequence on the total price of the material. Uh, as you can see, uh, if the chromium content is high enough, we are fully ferritic at uh, any temperature, except some uh, MX precipitate due to the presence of low amounts of titanium and niobium to precipitate uh, carbon and nitrogen. So due to this uh, BCC structure, whatever the temperature, recrystallization will be the only process to transform the microstructure, refine the microstructure from the the coarse uh, as cast structure as you saw before, etc. And so the final structure, texture, and then properties uh, will strongly depend on this re uh, recrystallization process during the production. So we are producing flat products uh, that you can find in <coughs> these ferritic grades, typically in white goods like these uh, washing machine drums, exhaust systems, and uh, in the cars, the decorative trim, the very shiny glossy uh, decorative parts you can find in this uh, uh, in your car maybe so uh, the 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 interest of the austenitic stainless steel is that they have a very high work earning rate which give them a, a very high performance in forming which is not the case in the in the ferritic which are bcc so uh, texture uh, crystallographic texture controls uh, in two ways, the, the, the formability. First, the deep drawability. It's, it's well known that the texture influences the ability to make this uh, deep wound cup. But also, the occurrence of uh, uh, a defect that we call ridging or roping in English, which is uh, uh, an undulation of, of the strip uh, in the parts that are strained along the rolling direction. And it's a real uh, through thickness process. It's not, uh, it's not orange peel, it's not a surface defect. You see here the, the top surface and the bottom surface which are heavily correlated. It's, uh, it's really an undulation. And this is due to orientation bonding in the microstructure. So very elongated cluster of grains having similar orientations. Uh, so this is the, 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 the sheet plane, uh, rolling direction TD. Um, and uh, this uh, bonding is uh, coupled with uh, a tendency of uh, out of shear, uh, sorry, out of plane shear. Uh, you see here on this uh, on this picture, it's a, a section of the Euler space phi two equal forty five degree, where you see superimpose the line our typical texture of a um, final product uh, ferritic stainless steel, and the color code is the uh, the shear tendency. Uh, for uh, <laughs> tension in the rolling direction. And you see that the maximum of the texture are positioned at posi uh, in, the s in the orientation space at position where you have high shear tendency. So if you combine big cluster of grains and strong shear tendency, these cluster of grains are able to, uh, to express this shear tendency and create this undulation. You lose the averaging of individual behaviors of grain as you should have in a, a polycrystal. So where does it come from? Given the size of uh, this, uh, the length of these uh, grain clusters, 
it has to deal with the, the hot rolling, which is the, uh, the only step which gives such uh, an elongation in the microstructure. And so we have to focus on the what happens during the hot rolling in terms of recrystallization and texture content. So what do we know about uh, textures uh, due to hot rolling? These are experimental results. Uh, only I focus on the mid thickness of the products, avoiding all the story with the shear close to the, the surfaces. So uh, you saw a nice uh, micro, uh, macro graph of, uh, of a slab uh, showing the equiaxed uh, region at the center of a slab, and it, this gives a, a random texture. But after hot rolling, uh, we end up with such a strong alpha fiber. So the alpha fiber is the one defined by the 110 in the rolling direction. Uh, which is not exactly what we, what we obtain if we make some um, crystal plasticity uh, calculations, starting from equiax grain, random initial texture, plane strain compression, where we should have rather a strong gamma fiber, 111, uh, and a, a weak uh, alpha fiber. Um, these are very uh, interesting f uh, orientations for the, the deep drawability. And if I come back to my, my previous, so the alpha fiber is here. So in the very high shear tendency uh, region, the gamma fiber is here where you have an evolution between the, the different components of the, the fiber. So the question is why do we have this, uh, this alpha fiber texture, which is not what we expect and not what we would like to have. So the objective of the Arthur uh, PhD was to identify the, the reason of this uh, texture evolution. And um, it was uh, uh, done in three, three main axes. First, working <laughs> on the, um, the deformation texture and uh, focusing on the effect of grain shape. So I uh, uh, advise you to read this uh, <coughs> nice paper on, on this part. I will not speak about the, the, the modeling and the go into detail of this uh, rolling uh, deformation things. The second point was to work on the, the influence of the deformation temperature on the recrystallization. And the point I will present you today is uh, on the, the modeling of uh, the, the orientation selection and the texture formation during the recrystallization that occurs between the rolling passes. We have. Uh, uh, 12 rolling passes uh, during the hot rolling step. And so the overall, the final texture should be the result of deformation texture, recrystallization texture, deformation texture, etc. So the um, experiments were led so on a 20% chromium grade with uh, niobium and titanium. We start from uh, a sample of industrial material. The transfer bar is the intermediate step between the roughing mill, which is a reversible slow rolling, and the finishing mill, which is a continuous tandem mill, seven stands. So it's, uh, it's the only place where we can cut a part of material, in fact. Uh, so that's why uh, we use this one. It's r fully recrystallized, 200 micron grain size, and with a quite weak texture, but already with some, um, some alpha fiber and also cube, and the maximum at the rotating cube. We performed a uh, lab hot rolling uh, test in a single pass after a rating at a given temperature, then waiting for the, uh, the rolling temperature and uh, straining in a single pass. I will present only the 1100 degrees today, uh, but the two, two reduction. And then water quench, so it's not a real um, um, static recrystallization directly after the, the deformation because it's very difficult to hold the temperature precisely uh, after a, a lab hot rolling. Uh, so then after in furnace, we made some isothermal treatment to look at the recrystallization mechanism. Okay, so let's look at the, the texture evolution. This is the same as the previous, the initial one. After straining, 50% reduction or 75% reduction, we see this uh, strong uh, development of the, uh, the alpha fiber uh, and especially the reinforcement here on, on the, the rotated cube uh, orientation. So, um, and the <coughs> sharpening of the overall texture. 
by uh, recrystallization and healing for fully recrystallized uh, state. Uh, we have an overall weakening of the, be careful to the scale of the, of the texture. And uh, the, we end up with some uh, cube fiber orientation and uh, maximum on the, on the alpha, as you can see, uh, especially here on the 112, 110 in the, in the high reduction. So how does it proceed? Uh, we have, so this is the rolling direction and the normal direction, the thickness. So we have crushed the grain, which are pancake elongated like this. And we see that we have bulging uh, of, uh, of subgrains. This was probably a subgrain here, and this red grain. Uh, and he, he grows in the, the blue, uh, pink, I don't know what is the name of this color. Um, and we have several examples like this where we can see, so it's well known that the, at high temperature like this, the ferrite recrystallized by uh, abnormal subgrain growth like this. And we see we have quite few uh, um, recrystallization sites and mainly related to uh, grain boundaries uh, between the, um, the, the, the former grains. We created very few high angle boundaries inside the deformed structure. So if we look at uh, now the, the orientations and the orientation selection, so it's not random. <laughs> Uh, you see here the number fraction of recrystallized grain per main texture component as a function of the recrystallized fraction. <coughs> and we can see that uh, since the very beginning of the recrystallization process, we have already done the, the orientation selection uh, with a, a dominant uh, cube and a rotated cube uh, uh, orientation compared to the, for example, the, the blue ones are the, the gamma grain that we would like to have, which are in a very small number compared <coughs> to the, the other one. So oriented nucleation and uh, almost uh, constant fraction. So we try to, to, to predict this recrystallization texture uh, coming back to abnormal uh, grain uh, growth models, um, considering uh, the evolution of individual uh, crystallite in an average matrix. So uh, the, the crystallite is characterized by its size, its average misorientation with the matrix, uh, its surface energy, and its mobility, of course, and the, the average environment uh, by the, the same uh, uh, characteristics, uh, the average of these characteristics. So we can write all the equations for the, the growth condition of this a particular uh, subgrain, uh, taking into account uh, the, the Zener pressure and uh, the, the growth evolu the evolution of the average grain size with the same kind of equation. We took properties of the boundaries which are depending on the misorientation as we have the, the information. And as uh, Mark showed uh, this morning, the abnormal growth criterion is when the, an individual uh, a subgrain is growing faster than the, the average. So we can compute uh, this uh, relative growth rate as a function of the relative size and the misorientation and create these maps where all the points which are higher than this red line are conditions which should lead to uh, abnormal uh, growth. So if we try to compare this uh, with the vertex uh, model, which was a reference uh, method for um, simple microstructures. So we create uh, a population of crystallites characterized by their size distribution and property distribution, uh, make it uh, grow. And then uh, we compare the property, the initial properties of what became grains uh, versus this uh, line critical line that we, we define, we see that uh, almost all of these grains are in the, in the right uh, uh, area of the, this diagram. And this is the probability to reach the critical size um, for all the subgrains which are in a given uh, coordinate, so a misorient average, uh, sorry, yes, average misorientation and uh, relative grain size. Where it's interesting to see that there, the, of course, the probability increase when we, we move like this, but um, that uh, it's significantly high for uh, 
relative growth rates much higher than zero, of course. That's the not really this border which is important, but some uh, uh, significant growth rate to, 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 to bring to significant uh, uh, recrystallized uh, fraction. So uh, the growth rate is uh, also important, and we modified this uh, with the time integrations, meaning that for each of these subgrain, we calculate the growth rate and we time integrate it. Of course, we have problem of uh, box uh, size, so we have to some of the small grains disappear, or small subgrain disappear, and we suppress also the, the, the smallest to keep constant uh, box size, average the size, and then uh, the um, recrystallized grains are defined based on a critical size, which is much higher than the initial uh, um, subgrain uh, size. <coughs> and so we have the, the, the texture at, at each step. So Again, if we create something, a, a model microstructure that is close to what we have in our rolled uh, material, we select uh, typical mean orientations. We create some uh, spread in terms of uh, size and uh, orientation inside this, uh, this band to, to mimic the, the deformed structure. And if we uh, make it grow, grow by the, the, the vertex, we, we can see this, this kind of... Uh, of evolutions, and if we compare what we obtain in terms of, uh, of texture uh, with the, the, the vertex and with our time integrated uh, mean field model, we you see that we catch very well the ranking of the different uh, uh, components and even the, the absolute uh, <coughs> volume fraction uh, uh, for the, the different texture components. Of course, it's strictly related to uh, these uh, advantages, as mentioned uh, Mark uh, this morning, the size advantage of the, the red component and also the, the misorientation advantage, uh, which will make them uh, higher driving force and uh, high uh, mobility. So, uh, so now we applied to experimental microstructure. So we made some uh, large uh, EPSD maps on the deformed uh, microstructure to measure this distribution and identify these uh, uh, parameters, so uh, individual parameters for each <coughs> subgrain and the, the averages. We also measured the precipitation state to introduce a reasonable Zener pressure. And now let's look at what it gives. So here you have the, the experimental hot rolled uh, texture. The experimental uh, texture of the recrystallized fraction for 75% recrystallized and uh, what, uh, what is given by the model, which is uh, in this case very close. This graph uh, represents the um, comparison between the experimental volume fraction of each orientation in the Euler space with a 15 degrees uh, spread uh, versus what is predicted and the big uh, markers are the uh, the, the precise uh, uh, low index orientations that we're interested in, uh, showing again here the, uh, the cube orientation, which is the, the, main, uh, the main component. So it works very well for that. We are very happy. Uh, it's a bit less nice for the, the higher reduction, but still we, we still catch the, the, main, um, the main feature of this uh, strong uh, alpha and uh, uh, cube orientation with here too large uh, estimation of the cube, which is here in this, uh, this cloud of the cube. But again, it's uh, relatively uh, quite good at uh, giving us the, the right uh, texture. And these are the experimental distribution which explain this result, because finally our model is simply the transformation, the selection, selection <coughs> procedure based on these uh, individual properties. And you can see that, so the black line is for the cube orientation, which has in this condition both uh, a size advantage and a misorientation uh, advantage, uh, which is also uh, the case at the 7500. Uh, it's less true on the disorientation, uh, I mean, uh, misorientation, but uh, very clear on the, on the, the size advantage. I'm on time. Perfect. Great. 
So, um, conclusion, this is what I, I didn't show you, but you, which is in the, in the ACTA paper I mentioned, which is uh, the, um, uh, we know that we have a tendency to develop the alpha fiber due to the, the, the plane strain compression of our microstructure, and that this is uh, further enhanced by the, the shape of the grain and the pancake grain. Uh, Interpass static recrystallization will proceed by uh, abnormal subgrain growth and will develop the alpha and cube fibers, uh, which are due both to a size and uh, misorientation advantage. Uh, and uh, this was relatively well captured by our, our model. And uh, from an industrial point of view, now we understand very well that we can have a positive scenario where we have multiple recrystallization, which each recrystallization, even if it leads to non very beneficial uh, orientation, it will at each time weaken the, the texture. It's still alpha, but it's weak alpha. And it's equiax grain, which will lead to less 